Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time if you're new around here. My name is James, aka Widowed, and this is your aggressively mediocre player's guide to the fight caves. As you can see, I'm teleporting there right now. If you do teleport through the minigame options to the fight pit, then you just have to run along here. I'm not going to be going over everything like gear and invent setup because you have access to the wiki and you've probably already looked it all up. So, you know, it's there. You don't need me to tell you what gear to bring. You bring in your best range gear with as much prayer bonus as you can stack onto it. I've got a setup that looks like a typical invent might. You can adjust this as you see fit, depending on what your gear looks like. This is what my gear looks like, because this is my best range gear. So it's what I'm going with, but yeah. I just got a Slayer task to do this as well, so I'm wearing the Slayer helm, but obviously don't do that if you're not on task, but it's going to help speed this up a lot for me. This is more about teaching you the mechanics behind each of the enemies in the fight caves, the fight caves mechanics themselves, and how to fight Jad when you get there. So yeah, that's what this video is about. Don't be expecting like loads of gear and shit. As I've said, that's pretty much all you're getting. Purple sweets are the only thing. Like, they're hella expensive if you're on a main. But uh, as an item man, I have no other use for them. So I may as well bring them. And yeah, I'm just going to be camping the buff of the hallway. So, before we go in there, there are just two plugins that I would recommend. The Fight Cave Waves plugin is going to show a little panel, like a quest helper panel, that tells you which enemies are in the current and the next wave if you have it set to both like I do. That's really handy for knowing what is coming up. And then the Fight Cave Spawn Predictor. I don't have anything special set up in here, but by having it on wave display mode next it's going to show me where on in the cave the next waves enemies are about to spawn which is really handy for positioning coupled with the list of exactly the enemies that you have you know what you're looking for you find them you're like okay i know that spawning here i need to stand over there you'll see more examples of that as we get on into it but i highly recommend both of these plugins especially if you're learning and the only other thing is uh, people have asked before how i hide the the lava lines because they're really distracting and i agree they're really distracting uh, if you want to do that it's these ids right here that you have to put into the ground object hider i believe this isn't a default plugin you might have to install it as well in the plugin hub uh, but yeah, if you input these in, I'll try and remember to put them in the description of the video, then you don't have to look at the horrible ice strain for the whole way. In terms of plugins though, that is it. We are going to dive on in there and I'm just going to explain things bit by bit as we go through it. Alright, so the first thing to do about the fight caves is a wave based minigame. That means that we're going to fight waves of increasingly difficult enemies at the end of which we have one final boss and we have to do it all in one go you can actually log out between the waves if i clicked the log out button now in the middle of a wave while i'm in combat it would wait till the end of the wave and then pause to allow me to log out at which point i could log back in and continue the run from the current wave but yeah, you can't like leave the area and go to a bank to restock or anything. It's got to be all in one scene. So, as we're getting into it here already, you can see I'm already kind of flying through it. That's given the gear. The first enemy we have is these Tzkik. I have them tagged because I want to always see them at a distance, which is why I have them tagged with the name showing above it. You don't want to get them anywhere near you because if they hit you, regardless of whether it's a 1 or a 0 or a 20 hundred not that they can hit anything reasonable they just hit tiny numbers it drains a prayer point so if you've got one on you for a couple of ticks it's just going to keep draining your prayer the hell annoying you don't want to let them get anywhere near you make the bats your priority as soon as you start any wave basically the blobs on the other hand far less annoying far more useful of a minion uh, they are great for safe spotting other minions by having them line up behind them. They are easily safe spotable themselves if you need to. And 
they're pretty easy to kill. They split down into the smaller forms after, which can also be used to save spot enemies. As you can see, I got them lined up here. Uh, so we like the blobs. They're also good for healing off, because if you're someone who isn't quite there yet, probably want to bring bloods along to this. If you're struggling on your fire cape, like you've done a few attempts and you're running out of supplies, I highly recommend bringing blood magic. Because you can heal up off the ranges, the blobs, and the melees fairly easily. Now we've been through the bats and the blobs, but the rangers have started spawning now. There's nothing too complicated about them. Uh, they have a range from about here. It'll start attacking me. I guess I'll... I'm going to deal with these bats and you'll see how close it takes the ranger to get before it starts attacking me. About that far. Yeah, so they have to get pretty close before they can actually get to you. There's nothing fancy about these. They die pretty easily. They do hit hard, so you want to pray against them when you can. But they're not as accurate as some of the later enemies. So if you do take damage from them, it's not the worst thing in the world. you got time to regen it or eat purple sweets, use bloods, whatever. The rangers only really become difficult when you have them alongside the mages and you have to tank them. But yeah, you do want to be praying against them up until that point, but prioritising killing the bats before they get into range with you ahead of the rangers if necessary. Now, you can see I am stood by this rock quite kind of permanently. I'm just going to deal with the bats first, going to try and keep our distance. Lovely stuff. And we've got that bat to line up behind the blob. And that blob is going to collide perfectly in this rock to illustrate my next example. This is Italy Rock, the little boot heel here. It's what people refer to as Italy Rock. And it is a good spot to be at because you can do this. A melee, or, which you haven't seen yet, or a blob can get stuck on this corner. They just can't get past. If I tag it, for example, you can see it's one square here. It can't get past this skeleton corpse. So it's always going to stay there, which means I can safely kill the bat that's behind it or anything else that I need to deal with in the surrounding area. And you can also potentially safe spot things on the other side of this, which you'll see later. So Italy Rock is generally where you want to camp out, especially when you're learning and, you know, trying to, to just crack the waves. It's the best place to be. These guys do hit you every now and then, but it's not usually too major. I would usually bring the bloods, but I totally forgot, so it is what it is. And the way that the waves work is you face one enemy, so you start off with one bat. The wave after that, you face two bats. And then it adds a new enemy. And then it adds a new enemy and a bat. Then a new enemy and two bats. Then two of the new enemy, two bats. Then a new enemy. Etc, etc, etc. So... We know we're at the end of our current ranger run because there's just a double ranger on this wave. It's a complicated system. I probably didn't explain it very well. I'm not going to explain it any better if I try again. So I hope that was good enough. And after you've done a double wave, you end up with a single new enemy again there at the start. And just like the blobs, we can safe spot the melees over here. Could have probably killed it by now, just kiting it, to be honest, but I did kind of want to show it lining up in the correct position. Thing is, if you get into melee range of these guys, they are going to uh, heal themselves and nearby targets when they attack. And they do hit pretty hard, so you don't want to get hit off prayer by one of these guys. And ideally, you'd rather not get them into melee range with you at all because they will start to heal things nearby. Uh, I'm trying to avoid that at all costs, even though this is supposed to be a demonstration because I still need that combat achievement and I may as well get it if I can. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to get into melee range, but uh, if you do, you'll see a little light purple plus pop up above them. I'll let you know that they're healing. But yeah, these waves are pretty simple at the minute. Uh, until the ranger gets back at least, we just get to chill because everything is safe spottable or laughable. Just always trying to make sure that I start waves far from a bat spawn so that I don't have to... I want to see if I can demonstrate a different safe spot. Oh, that could have almost filmed with a combat task. 
I was going to see if I could get him to stand it behind these guys, but he got to me first. I'm sure I'll get to show it off at some point, but it's just another way that you can say spot the melees. I don't know, we can't really do it here, but we can use the blob to save spot the bat till we deal with it. No, we can't, because it didn't spawn in time. I got hit by the bat and drained two prayer points there, I think. The basic gist is, kill the bat, kill anything that you have to pray against, make sure everything else is safe spotted while you're doing it. And as long as you follow that formula, you can't really go wrong. It, get, it only really gets difficult when you start getting to the mage waves. Okay, so we've got a range of melee wave coming up next. So we want to deal with the ranger first. Hopefully it's dead before the melee gets to us. But if you don't have the DPS to kill the ranger before the melee gets to you, all you have to do is stand behind it like this and it'll block it. You're all good. You can deal with the ranger. You can get over to Italy Rock with hours to spare. He's not going to line up right. So what we're going to do... He's just pure melee, run through there, and now he's trapped on the other side. I'm actually going to deal with the melee first here, because I don't want to have to pray against him, so it's easier for me to just kill him with prey ranged up, and then deal with the ranger after, rather than worry about getting him into a safe spot while I'm killing this thing. And here I should have the DPS to kill this before the bats get to me, so never mind. Oh no. It got a nibble. It had a nibble. Good job I've already got that combat task. I don't want this cunt to heal. Please don't heal on me. Please don't heal on me. There we go. And you can see I had the range assist on the other side of it. Lay rock here. If I want, I can just pop him back in there. You know? We control Italy Rock. Italy Rock is the home base of operations because you can do whatever the fuck you want here. It's just a big square, essentially. It's just a big square, but it's a big square that things get stuck on. And we love it because of that. But right here on this next wave, I'm not sure if that melee is gonna... I feel like he's gonna come down here and get to me. So we might just have to pop over here. Deal with that. Oh my gosh, that bat got two hits on me, that's dreadful. Okay, now we'll kill the ranger. Just like any fight in RuneScape, you just have to get it to simplify as much as possible. The less things that are potentially hitting you that you have to worry about, the better. So, separate the enemies as you see fit. Use the rune to your advantage. It's the way it is for a reason. Oh, I thought I had them both safe spotted. I only had one of the bats safe spotted. I've taken so many hits from bats in this run. You should try not to. Unless you've got oodles and oodles of prayer. I only have a 8 prayer bonus right now in my current outfit. So it's not the best for elongated use of prayer, but with all these pots and restores, I think we should be fine. Double Ranger Melee coming up next. We are approaching the Mage Waves, which is our final new enemy up to Jad. And now we have the easiest wave of the whole lot, the double melee. After which the Major is going to spawn over here. Now the Major is the nastiest of them all. He slaps like a motherfucking truck and he can fire from miles away. And it will always hit you when you don't expect him to. So you want to have your pre mage up at all times. You also don't want to get in melee range of you because he will have a little nibble on your face. Which can also hurt a large amount. So the Major, it's also got the highest defense of any of them. If you're a lower level, you're probably going to be struggling to hit. This is the point where you're going to want to sip that ranging pot and throw up Eagle Eye or Rigo if you have it. Because these can be tough to hit if you're not using a buff or like I am. If you're using like an MSB or a Rune Crossbow with Broad Bolts or something, you need every little bit of help you can get. So yeah, we're basically going to be camping Mage Prey for the rest of the cave until Jad now. We can turn it off between waves briefly, but it's not necessary. Uh, well, it's not going to be necessary for me today, given how quickly I'm able to kill some of these enemies. I keep feeling like it sounds like I'm bragging. I'm not trying to brag at all. I'm just trying to explain that it, it's probably not going to be this easy. 
if you're trying to get your first fire gear, you know, you're not going to have the same leveling gear and whatnot. Same rules as before though, we prioritise the bats above the mages and crack on as best we can. If you take a hit or two from a bat, it's not the worst thing in the world, you just don't want to leave them sat there hitting you like you can do with a blob because if a blob sat there hitting you, it's going to hit zeros most of the time. If a bat's sitting there hitting you, it's going to drum prey every tick. I could safe spot that major if I ran over there quick enough, but... Oh, I actually did get it over there. But again, we don't need to deal with these desperately. We can just leave them there and kill this thing. As soon as the major goes down, that gives us an opportunity to turn our prior off for a few ticks. While we finish the blobs, get into position for the next wave, if need be. As it stands, I'm actually kind of happy with where we're sat in the middle for this next wave. I'm just going to go ahead and set my quick prayers up to Pro Magic and Eagle Eye so that I can always flick them back on at the start of a wave once I've finished off the last enemy. Of course, you can flick to conserve prayer if you feel like you need to and you feel like you're capable of it. One tick flicking is an option, however, if you miss them, it's going to be a hefty hit from one of the mages. As you see, that was a quite a low one, but I don't really want to tank another, so I'm not going to. I am going to safe spot this mage, though. By getting straight into cover, he's on the other side of Italy Rock. We don't have to worry about him at all. We can take out this bat, take out this blob, and then kill the other bat before the mage. Gives us a moment to chill without our prayer on. We actually got that bat completely safe as well behind the blob, which is nice. I'm basically just trying to demonstrate as many different uses of the area as possible. Different ways that you can safe spot uh, minions to not have to deal with them until you've dealt with others. Now, in the case, if I had a melee here instead of a bat, if it was like melee mage rather than bat mage like it was then, the melee would have still got trapped on this corner and I would actually be able to attack him without the mage seeing me as long as my weapon has a long enough range, which a, a buffer definitely does. Uh, if you got a blowpipe, it might be a little more sketchy. So you'll want to like put mage up while you verify that you can hit it from that far away. Uh, but yeah, you can kill the melee or a blob while a mage is on you from there. Because uh, it, will, it will get on you from there is my point. And again, blood magic would be great here, you know, you could just heal up off these without using any actual supplies. Definitely recommend it, especially when you're learning and you make, if you're likely to make mistakes, you need to heal up more often. Oh, so we got our first major and ranger here. So ideally we want to separate them because we don't really want to be tanking one. And if I just run over here, I've actually got that mage completely safe now. There are going to be times though where you can't get them both safe. Or get one of them safe while you deal with the other. It, it, that's why it really helps to have the, the fight cave with spawn predictor. So you can see where they are. And like plan accordingly where you want to be set up at the start of a wave. I'm actually just going to dip into my brews a bit here. I'm not concerned about resources. So I'm just going to top up and then reset the arrange pot before this next kill. Right, and that will give us a defense boost as well, so that if we do have a ranger on us at some point, uh, while we're prayed mage, we'll have a little bit of extra oomph on our defense. Now I'm going to run straight over here at the start of this wave, because I want this guy to be safe so I can deal with the ranger first. So he's going to get put behind this rock over here, and we're going to be able to kill the Toxil without a worry in the world. We can even wait for the bat to come over and deal with him before we move on to this mage. And then for the next wave, I think I want to get this... If I'm stood down here, then this ranger will walk and get trapped here. The major will walk and get trapped here. And I'll be able to deal with the major while the ranger sits behind this corner. If you don't have run energy and you want to do that, all you have to do is let the guy out. And then go hide behind the rock. So that he gets dragged around. And then you could run over here. Much closer to where you need to be. And as you'll see. Exactly how we predicted it. I'm basically just plugging this plugin at this point. But it makes things so much easier. Especially if you're learning. But also if you're a, a veteran. Which I would consider myself at this point. 
This is only my fifth fight cave on this account, but I did an, a lot of fight caves in leagues. Uh, and I did one on my one hour limit lock series, which you can see if you'd like to see a fire cape attempt with a more limited budget. I did it in 45 hours after account creation. 46 hours technically. With a blowpipe set up. Oh, I stacked that badly. Okay, what do we do here? We've got two of them and we want to separate them, but they're literally right on top of each other. Well, there is a good solution. All we have to do is hightail it as south as we can get or as north as we can get even it's far away from italy rock and when we step out one of them is going to get set free and then we just step back and that's how you separate them nice and easy i'm just going to leave the frog behind there so we can take care of the ranger and he's a bit far away there so i'm going to move further north again to pull him a bit closer if you have a uh, weapon with less range, then you'll have to do this. Like if you're using a blowpipe, you have to drag him a bit closer so you don't get pulled out here. Okay, this next wave's a little awkward, the ranger in the middle. Uh, I'm hoping I can just kill him before the major gets to me. But I'm gonna have to put pre mage up and just tank a couple hits. Because it's too risky to not have pre mage up. This guy can hit like, I don't even know, like 60s or something. High 40s. But it feels like it hit 60s. Same as an earlier example, just the reverse position where the mage and the ranger were, plus we've got a couple blobs on top of it. Coming up on our first triple wave, meaning we'll have a mage, a range, and a melee. Also known as the home stretch. At this point, we're just over halfway through the amount of damage dealt to complete the caves, though. With 42 is the exact halfway point in damage dealt. Okay, I'm gonna let the Major get saved. Because that'll pull both the ranges straight to me. Based on the current spawns. Gotta get that one closer though, I don't wanna get pulled out. In the later waves, do tend to chill more on in this sort of quadrant near the entrance to the, the north of Italy Rock and use this one more to safe spot people that spawn over here. Whereas in the early you spend more time sort of camped over here where you safe spot in the melees. But generally, like you don't really use this side of the map that much unless you're hunting them down, you know. This is just a mage and a melee, so nice easy wave. Melee is fully safe. No, the bat's gonna get me. Oh, it got two hits on me. Terrible. After we kill this mage, the melee will just fall into his regular old safe spot. Okay, we're gonna wanna focus the bat straight away. And then get the mage to follow us down here. So that the melee is safe while we deal with the mage. I don't know if that's gonna drag him out. I feel like it is. I'm just gonna kill this guy first. And then I don't have to worry about keeping him in the safe spot. Yeah, and then for this next wave, it's a bit awkward, but I'm just going to chill down here and I should be able to kill the melee before it gets to me. Another option would be to hide behind this rock and just pray against the melee, but I do want to keep trying to maintain not getting in melee range of this because of that combat achievement. But of course, pray uh, mage at all times while there's a mage alive that can see me. Next wave is nice and easy. This melee will get safe spot immediately if we just sit here and we should be able to reach the major with our buffer. If you were out of range and it was like with a blowpipe or something, you could... Well, I think I actually am, so good use of it. You just run around this corner just a tiny bit, drag him a bit closer, and then you're all good. Oh, I turned that off too early. I got lucky there, hit for a zero. Another relatively easy wave, we are just going to sit right next to this mage and let all the melees stack up on this wall. So I'm just trying to kill the melee here as quickly as I can. Hopefully by... Oh no, he got the heal in, there goes the combat task. Well, at least I showed an example of what the heal looked like, it was all planned. I probably remembered the combat tasks that I had done wrong anyway, because I'm an idiot like that. Here, we have an awkward setup with the mage and the ranger. But thankfully for us, we've got these blobs, which means that we can put ourselves exactly where we want to be 
at the end of the round. It's like uh, if you ever played Call of Duty Nazi zombies back in the day and you had a crawler. You got the crawler to follow you around, the guy with no legs, because you could control the end of a wave and be in a good position at the start of the next one. It's exactly the same here, and in fact, if we're quick enough, the melee is safe spotted, the mage is safe spotted, now the range is the only thing we have to deal with. We pull him in a bit closer, and then we go to ruin his day. I'm actually going to let the mage out next, turn it back and forth to position the enemies correctly. Keep myself safe at all times. Like, I've not spent really any food other than when I've demonstrated taking hits and stuff like that, so... And a couple of pings here and there from blobs. Most of the damage here is avoidable if you play correctly and you're not rushing through it. You're taking the time to be in the right position at the start of waves and whatnot. And for this next wave, it's a bit different, actually. So the next one, we're going to kill this bat ASAP and then we're going to pray ranged and see if we can kill the ranger before the major gets to us and safe spot this melee here. Don't know how well it's going to work, but that's what I'm trying. Okay, the problem is that mage is definitely going to see me first. So we kill the melee, then kill the ranger because it can hit us, we're not praying against it, then we kill the mage. Get into the other side of Italy Rock so that I can safe spot the ranger on the next one. We're burning through it here. There's 63 waves in total, with Jad being the last wave. Right now, it is 3.58 in the AM, so I'm hoping we're done in time for 4.20. Gonna just brew up a little bit. Yeah, my point before, if these were the other way around, then we would be able to hit the melee without the mage seeing us, because the melee can't actually see us right now, there's too many spaces between them. It'd be the same case if it was in the reverse position. We'd just be able to kill the melee without praying anything. Now, this coming for us would be a bit awkward if we didn't have a blob right here, but we've got a blob right here, so we're groovy. We're absolutely chilling. He's just going to stand there waiting in his queue, like a good British yuck. Yet, medge cot. He's gonna stand there waiting, and we're gonna kill him while he's waiting. And the blob, just chilling, having a whack at us. Not getting anywhere. I might be wrong, but I think this might be our last double bat wave coming up, if memory serves. So we won't have to deal with those cunts much longer. I'm gonna get this ranger safe spot behind this rock, and uh, hopefully kill the melee before the major gets to me. Got another heal off there, but. Pretty much dealt with him in time. Yeah, looks like no more bats. Got a double blob wave next, and then we'll have a double ranger wave, a double melee wave, and a double mage wave to finish off before Jad. Next one, we're actually going to get in a bit of a different position. It's a bit of a weird wave, that next one. I'm going to try and do... Get in this corner. Okay. Oh, I just want to kill this guy. ASAP. Don't let the ranger out. I'll let the ranger out. I'm an idiot. I fucked up this one. Alright, the important thing is not to panic. Just keep you cool. We're going to kill the ranger first because he's able to hit us. Then we can deal with the other shit after. For the next one, we'll get this mage saved. Take out the rangers in the melee. Oh no, how did he get to me? He found his way around the corner. It's a good job I failed that task earlier and I'm not still trying to fucking get it because it makes it so much easier when you don't care like the heals are annoying but they're not that bad it's not like fighting a revenant where it actually impacts kill time okay should be able to get both the melees behind italy rock here while we deal with the major then we've just got the double mage wave before jad okay so you see there's an orange one and that's going to be the one that is jad spawn it's marked for me anyway because of the fight cave predictor but if you don't have that then you want to look where the orange one spawns because that's the one that's going to determine jad i'm trying to get one of them trapped here now there's no need for me to get one of them trapped here i could just stand there and pray and kill them both if i was going straight into jad but it's seven minutes past four and i don't want to rush my jad explanation just because i'm a fiend for 420 so i'm gonna just sit here and chill i could log out now and it would pause my timer. I'd have to start the current wave again, which would mean killing that major again, which isn't too bad. But I'm not asked about my time, I don't care. And I just want to go hit 420 and then come back and explain to y'all how Jad goes. Because my method of killing Jad is pretty simple. And 
I tried for a long time before I finally got it, and since I got it, I don't know if I've died to a jad. I don't want to be the embarrassing example today, but we should be okay. It's probably worth saying as well, like, you could also do this if you were running low on supplies and wanted to regen HP. You could just sit here to regen HP, like, we are gonna regen just by being here. It's the best place to do so before Jad, unless you've got Jad spawning in a spot where you can definitely save him. We actually do, because he's spawning here, so we can get him to just come to this side of Italy Rock, which is great. It'll give me a minute to explain things. And it's a nice place to have him for when his healers spawn. Basically, wherever Jad's spawning, you want to be in a position that blocks line immediate line of sight to him. You don't have to be, but it helps to be near to one, so that when his healers spawn, you can drag them into the position that he can't see you from and kill the healers. Okay, everyone, back to it. We've got this mage to finish off before Jad spawns. Now, I'm not going to range pot or use eagle eye on Jad, just to start off with at least, because I'm a bit worried I might just kill him very quickly and not really get to demonstrate the fight. Yeah, so I'll have less ranged output by not having eagle eye and range pot up. Now, hopefully that gives us a middle ground where we have plenty of time to demonstrate the mechanics of the fight. I do want to get him into a safe spot to start off with though, because that means I could brew up and I would be drinking my range potion at that point normally and uh, you'd switch over to your diamond bolts E if you had them. Now, as soon as he spawns, you want prey ranged up just in case he's in a spot where he can get you, because that is the attack that we're trying to avoid at default. What I mean by that? is the attacks have different speed and you have more time to react to the mage attack than you do to the ranged one. Now I'm going to turn my sound effects up for this bit because I use sound effects heavily for fighting Jad to tell me when I need to switch prayers. And the way we're going to do it is we're just going to camp our pro missiles because that's the one we can't react to. And whenever we hear the mage attack or see the mage attack if you prefer to look at his footwork and a lot of people do, we switch over to the prone magic. After the tick, when the attack's gone, we can go back onto camp in the prone missiles. We're good. That's all you do is keep prone missile on and switch to this when he does the mage attacks. Then you go straight back to prone missiles. And that's literally the fight. Now, when the healers spawn, they're going to come from four different spots around the edges of the cave and come towards him. You want to attack them once each and that will aggro them to you so that they are not healing Jad. Because if they heal Jad up to full health, then even after you kill them, they can respawn again. So you attack them once each. Most important thing is remembering to keep your prayers up. Just stay calm and keep focused on making sure you're not missing any Jad prayers because you don't want to get hit off prayer. He can kill you very, very quickly in a single hit, and potentially if you do. So, yeah, we'll start with Prey Missiles, and we'll see what he does and talk for it. So he started off with a Mage attack. We swap over to Mage, and then straight back onto Missiles. Another Mage attack. Straight back to Missiles. Another Mage attack. Back to Missiles. He's just camping Mage at the minute. There's a ranged attack, and... I wouldn't have had a chance to react to that if I didn't already have my range prayer up. See how simple this is? If he makes that noise and gets on his hind legs, we swap. Otherwise, we stay where we are. Okay, now I've got all the healers on me. We can chill around here. Now these guys can actually hit you a decent amount, so you may want to pray against them. Especially if you have lower defense levels. Uh, and they can heal themselves and each other as well. But generally, if you're able to get them into a spot away from the Jad, you're not going to have any problems at all. You're just going to be able to take them out. And as long as they haven't healed them back up to full, they'll never spawn again. Now all we have to do is go finish Jad off. Same method as before. Pre-range, switch if he attacks with mage. Yeah. 
And there you have it. That's how you be a fight kids master. We get given a fire cape as a reward. And I am going to exchange it. Because you have to gamble for the pet. It is a war. Never lucky. Well, that is how you do the fight caves, folks. If you have any questions about anything that was unclear, please do leave them in the comments. I will reply to every single one of them. I am here to help in my guide videos especially. If there was anything that you want clarification on, please do leave it in the comments and I will get back to you. If this video helped you, I'd also love to know. If it helped you get your first fire cape, definitely leave it in the comments. Let's hype that up. Big ups your bad self for getting it after watching this. And hopefully you will have a fire cape on you back sometime soon. I'm sure you will because you're a damn master it after watching that example. We got a decent time with the Jad fire as well. I'm glad I didn't sip or use Eagle Eye. Because it gave me plenty of time to showcase the method of just camping in range and then swapping. Yeah, that's going to be all for this one. Hit that like button and the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. i got plenty of guides. I also have regular videos. Like, I put videos out pretty much every day. Usually one hour limit locked, although I think it's off season at the minute when this will be releasing. But yeah, daily videos. Make sure you sub for them. Until next time, though, it's going to be all from me, so look after yourselves, be lovely to one another, and I will see you on the next one.